Hello again, this is Dr. Anthony Bull of the Creighton University Exercise Science Department and we're here with another little lecture on how to do skin fold measurements and where the anatomical landmarks for skin fold measurements are. Again, I've got my friend the skeleton here. He's going to help me do a little bit of skin fold anatomical landmark discovery. And first we're going to look at some of the most basic landmarks of the upper extremity that we use in skin fold testing. A very common skin fold measurement is the triceps skin fold. Remember, skin folds are a fold of the skin and subcutaneous fat that lies above the muscle. The idea is that at the tricep or anywhere else on the body where we do a skin fold, that we measure the amount of subcutaneous fat and skin. We, lose, we use those measurements, we hopefully don't lose those measurements, but we use those measurements in trying to determine the overall subcutaneous fat of the body and using regression equations then determine the body's density based on the overall subcutaneous fat or the sum of the skin folds. That body density is then put into our general Siri equation to calculate percent body fat from body density, another regression equation that we've talked about in the course previously. Let's first look at the tricep measurement. Again, I'm going to have my subject, the skeleton, move to the side and we're going to look at the tricep measurement. The tricep measurement is a measurement taking halfway between the olecranon process and excuse me, the olecranon process down here and the acromion process. It's exactly halfway between those two on the posterior aspect of the upper arm. So we would take a distance halfway between these two points on the posterior aspect of the upper arm. Here, if there were actually muscle, fat, and skin, I would take a skin fold measurement at half that distance. Now a very common mistake that new or first time testers make is that they will go from the first bony landmark they find which happens to be the spine of the scapula. So instead of measuring from the process in the anterior part of the shoulder blade, they will measure the posterior, go right to the spine of the scapula, measure halfway the distance and unfortunately their measurement will then be too low on the upper arm. It needs to be fairly high on the upper arm, halfway between those two bony landmarks. Thank you very much. Now, the next location we're going to look at is on the posterior scapula. Scapula. This is the inferior angle of the scapula that we use to take an oblique skin fold measurement, which is the subscapular skin fold measurement. So again, I'm going to have my client turn around. All the measurements for skin folds, remember, we've looked at this before, but all the measurements for skin folds are taken on the right side of the body. Not the dominant side of the subject, but the right side of the body. That's how all the regression equations were developed. So here we're going to look at the right scapula, and here is the inferior angle of the right scapula. So our subscapular skin fold measurement is two centimeters below the inferior angle at a 45 degree oblique angle. So the skin fold would be taken at this oblique angle. Now, sometimes it's very difficult to see or to palpate where the inferior angle is. So one of the hints you can use is gently, after warning or telling your subject that you're going to take their arm and gently bring it behind their back. That will actually cause the inferior angle of the scapula to wing out away from the rib cage. It'll take that serratus anterior muscle and relax it and let the scapula wing out. When it does, you'll be able to see the inferior angle. Then you can put your finger on the inferior angle, palpate that, gently relax their arm. Now I know where the inferior angle is at. I can go two centimeters below and make my position mark, small mark, on the subject's skin so I know where to go back to for the measurement. Again, all of the measurements for skin folds were developed on the right side of the body. We tend to use the Jackson and Pollock equations and skin fold locations that were developed by Jackson and Pollock and these are the ones that we're going through today. 
One other measurement I want to show you today is the mid-axillary skin fold. The mid-axillary is the level of the fifth rib, and you can have your subject or your patient place their arm in front of their body so that you can look at the midpoint of the axilla. The axilla is the armpit, remember, and if their arm were in the anatomical position, the mid axillary line would right, run right down the lateral side of the rib cage. So we can have them move their arm out of the way. That measurement is taken at the level of the fifth rib. Now, it's very difficult to palpate into the fifth rib. The alternate discussion of that measurement is at the level of the xiphoid process. The xiphoid process, if I go right over from that, I'm going to take that mid axillary skin fold. It is a vertical skin fold, so I'll pinch the skin in a vertical fashion at the mid axillary line at the level of the fifth, fifth rib or the xiphoid process. Now, in females, this often tends to be exactly where the lower strap or the lower elastic band of their sports top lies. And because that has probably taken the tissues and compressed the tissues, then we're going to move just below that line. Or, if the subject is comfortable, they can move their sports top strap up, and if we wait a few minutes, that skin will take on its normal density and will uncompact, and we can take the measurement there. But it's often easier to just go two centimeters below the sports top elastic strap and make that I'm sorry, the vertical fold in the skin fold, and that's our mid-axillary line. Next time, we're going to look at some of the other mid-body measurements. One that we'll have a look at next time is the supra-iliac, just above the ridge of the iliac, or the iliac crest, two centimeters above, in the anterior axillary line. So we'll be finding their hip bone, going two centimeters above, and again, another oblique skin fold. But that's just a teaser for next time. Next time we'll look at the mid body, or the torso measurements, as well as the lower body measurements of the thigh and the calf. But for now, this is Dr. Anthony Bull, and my friend the skeleton, saying thanks for joining us in the Exercise Physiology Lab review sessions, and we'll see you next time on the web.